Hi, I'm Janet Connor Knox, and this is Talking with Janet, but this is behind the scenes. Everybody who does a show on television, or in, in my case, a web series, will do a behind the scenes show, and that's what this is. I am most excited to have my executive producers, Brotherside Entertainment, talk to me about how they put the show together, who they are, and they're going to tell us a little about themselves. Um, some of it I already know, but we think that you're going to get a, a kick out of seeing um, these guys who work so hard to put the show together, Robert X. Golfin and S. Zachary Knox. Welcome to the newest dialogue in politics, community news, human interest stories, entertainment, and information from Eastern North Carolina. Janet Connor Knox is an award-winning journalist with more than 25 years experience in print, radio, and television. This is Talking With Janet. I, I've got to say, that I know that everyone is interested in who are all of these wonderful people that make the show Talking with Janet. And so this segment, this show, is introduce you to all of the wonderful people who work together to make this show happen. And of course, if you're looking at a national show, there are tens and tens of people. It's not so with this. The miracle is with just a few people. And one of the miracle workers is Robert Xavier Golfin, and Robert is, come on, come with me, uh, Robert, an actor. Just raise it to your head and pull the trigger. That's all you got to do. It's I simple. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it. Just do it. Please, please, please don't let me do this. Director. So it's that, this is kind of like under the laptop, sort of, just sort of sticking out? Um, is it next to me on the couch? Well, I it, imagine you'd be like next to me on the couch. No, I'm going like to be next this. to you, but this is going to be in front of you. Like the coffee table. So it's going to be right in front of me. Producer. Singer, songwriter. Singer. Did you hear me say, I'm sincerely sorry? Did you hear me say, how much I care? Because you're singing on the theme song. I am. I do some of the vocals uh, on the theme song, The Talking with Janet. Good gracious. So that means it's like all of, all, all, all of this talent. It's all of this I talent. I try. You know, you got to have a triple, be a triple threat. So. Is, that, is that the way it is, really? Do yeah. you have to know how to do 10 things in order to get some recognition? There has to be something that you master, but you definitely need to know how to do more than one thing because... This industry is just um, chock full of talent. And, and the other thing is sometimes, no matter how talented you are, um, you have times where things are slow. And so instead of just staring at a wall, you can move on to something else that you're equally passionate about. So what are your equal passions? Writing is number one. That's my number one love. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. Uh -huh. um, um, because I've always been a loner, solitary, so I'm sitting in front of my computer. Uh -huh. and just uh, doing my thing. Like, how do you know where to go when you're writing? And I'm asking this, I, I write as well, but like, where do you go? How do you know what you're, what you're going to do? You have an idea, and then you say, let me go with that idea? Or It's a different process each time. Um, when I write, I, I have a dark alter ego. Um, I'm a very nice guy, I think, in real life, oh. although some would disagree, I'm sure. But uh, my alter ego... I write things that, that scare me. There have oh. been, been a few things that I've tucked away in a drawer and some things that I've thrown away. And Horror scare you or psychopath scare you? Um, well, all of the above, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so all, and, of those, all of those things are in artists, is yes. what you're saying? And, yeah. and, and things, characters and situations that maybe I would be in another life. Okay, now in this life, in this particular life, this young man has done... Lots of acting. You have played everything from a student who, who, who will not get picked to debate against uh, Harvard to a drug addict. To, you've played all of these roles. All right, you were in The Great Debaters. I was, yes. And you played? I played a character named Dunbar Reed, who was uh, one of the debaters. I always describe him as the debater that didn't make the team. 
So. <laughs> All right. And so you got to work, work alongside Denzel Washington, which is the name everybody knows when you say, oh, my God, work long, worked alongside Denzel Washington. What do people think about that? I mean, it's interesting to me because the film is now a classic, and I knew that it would be when we were making it. And it's, it's aged at this point, but there's still so many people who haven't seen the film, and you should go see it, rent it. It's probably on YouTube because it was the day that it came out in theaters. It's a wonderful film. It really um, is. Yes, it is. It definitely is. But people and, and it's the classic, the underdog. These these students who are African American are going to debate a Harvard team that have they have all the bells and whistles. How will they ever match up against them? And, and, and set and and a um, where there's Jim Crow and all kinds mm -hmm. of problems. And Intelligent African American youth. Um, something that you don't often see in cinema these days. So many people haven't seen the film even today, even though it's been on you know television for Black History Month, and I've been on airplanes and it's been playing. And oh, uh, what was that like? It was really cool the first time. It was really cool. Did people in the plane go? I, I was I was on a south a Southwest flight heading to LA one time, uh -huh. and it was on. No, I I kind of nobody knew. Well, no, because I. I kind of like cowered in my seat a little bit. Cowered in your seat. You yeah. should be glad I wasn't on the plane. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, here he is, yeah, everybody. You, you would have told you know everybody. I would have yeah. told everybody there. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's not, you know, it's not something I, I go around like boasting about. I, so let's boast about HBO. You were, what did you play on? I played uh, the a, Wire. I played a crackhead on The Wire. <laughs> I, I tried to sell a, a toaster to a character named Bubbles on the show that's played by, that was played by Andre Royo. That was... Fun. Was it? Really, why? Really why? Why? You know, I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of freeing to play different people. Um, and and I had a lot of um, experience to draw from being from Philadelphia. You know, people. I was wondering where you were going to go with that sentence. <laughs> I had yeah. a lot of experience. <laughs> no, 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 not not method acting in that way. No, no, no. But you know, all I had to do was open up my my window or my door, and and I could see that character really. So, um, was I, he a sad character? Was he uh, just down on his luck? And then something we haven't, we we can't go on Netflix and see. You were on on stage in L. A. Mm -hmm. uh, in the storm. You played the lead character there. The storm, an original pop rock musical, which was written by Kate Nelson. I played the. It was an ensemble piece, but I played the male lead, Kevin, and. Um, you know, I, I had a girlfriend. I was the jock, the basketball star, and then there was another girl vying for my affections. But it's really the story of a group of kids and their families and how they uh, deal with the aftermath of a Katrina-like disaster. Oh gosh! And, and and it was a musical. It was my first musical. I've done you know theater before, but it was my first stage musical, and it was a lot of fun. It ran for about three weeks in L.A. And then you direct. I'm equally passionate about writing, directing, and acting. But as I said, writing is definitely my first love because writing is something I don't need anyone else for. When I'm directing, I need a team. I need a DP, cinematographer. I need, I need a cast. I need a boom operator. I need you know, lighting people. I need grips. Um, when I'm acting, I need a director to give me direction. Uh, I need a writer to write the words that I say. But when I write, like I said, it's just me and, and a computer or me and a pad. And uh, I'm... I'm able to create many worlds and many characters. Are you writing something right now? I'm always writing something. Are you really? I'm, I'm writing too much at the same time. You really? Know? Yeah. Several I, stories. Several stories, screenplays. You know, I'm, I'm working on a new book now, uh -huh. um, which is a follow-up to a book that I wrote back when I was in undergrad. What was that book? The book I wrote in undergrad was called Abandoning Adam, Confessions of an HBCU Scholar, Historically Black College or University. Uh -huh. And this new book is... It revisits some of the characters. From that Are book. you political at all? Do you do within within your writing? Do you feel compelled as an artist? I, I think I am innately. I, I don't set out to try to be political, but I'm interested in telling stories and introducing characters that people don't want to talk about. Um, or, or people are afraid to talk about or are just in denial about. I've always been about social issues and affecting change through art. So yes, I guess that does make me a little bit political. And I've always been an activist of sorts, particularly for young people. And so through my, my art, through my writing, through my filmmaking, I'm able to do that, I think, in a stronger way than I would be if I were out on the street 
you know, with my hand in the air. Is there is there a uh, a difficulty separating it sometimes? I mean, do you, for mm -hmm. instance, do you see something and get really upset about it? And go, oh my gosh! And then you know, you you, you have a one act play, or it, does it not turn out that way? No, it can be hard to to separate it, and 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 sometimes depending on what the subject is, I might not be able to use my art to. Uh, to express myself, and and sometimes I do, but I don't share it publicly. Okay, I'm I'm, right. I'm very upset about a lot of things. Yes, in this world. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I watched you during the 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 Democratic um, 2016 um, the the conference, the convention in mm -hmm. Philadelphia, and for some of the speeches, I you were responding to those speeches. Yeah, I won't say what speech. Yeah, um, in particular. I responded to uh, in a very strong way, but yeah. I will say that um, a particular uh, person um, in this this campaign season waited until the very end almost to uh, talk about certain subjects that are that should be at the top. What what su what subjects should be at the top? Um, you know, I think at the top of the list right now are the relations that African American males and females have with uh, the police. Um, I, I think the Black Lives Matter movement and the continued civil rights movement, because the civil rights movement is still going on, just in different incarnations, if you will. Um, I, I think that should be at the forefront of the conversation right now. And then, of course, we have the LGBTQ movement as well that is uh, a very strong issue. And, okay. and there are many more, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that some candidates and some people in this campaign campaign season are talking about these things constantly, and some aren't. And you think that they should? Oh, I think they definitely should be. I don't see how you can't be. You know? Well, particularly if they want your vote. I exactly. You know, exactly. on this show we talk about that a lot. You know, knowing who you're going to vote for, knowing if those people, those candidates, are speaking to you. I think that speaking to you that's extremely important. So, so young people who might say, you know what? I want to be an actor. In your promo, Hollywood Do or Die, there's a girl, one of the young women that said, I went to my mother, I was a really young kid, and I said, I want to be an actor. So a kid wants to be an actor. Mm -hmm. What do you say? What do you advise? You have to do it. If you keep saying that you're an actor and you're not doing it, you're not an actor. Um, if you have a, a camera, pick one up, record yourself doing a monologue, put your monologue on YouTube. I, I think that people have to understand that making a movie is different than being an actor. If you're going to make a movie, then you really have to know the nuts and bolts of the process. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, it is. But as an actor, yeah. you know, really learn your craft, uh, watch performances, read monologues, read screenplays um, on, online. There's so many sites out there where you can read them. Find the kind of characters and situations that you would love to play and be in on screen and then mimic them and then find your own way, infuse your, your, your own talent into it and just put yourself on tape. Go after, if you're just starting out, every kind of acting opportunity that you can, whether it's community theater or a short film, a student film. You know, I've been um, in this industry, I'm a veteran, whether people know it or not, but I've been in this industry since I was 15 years old, really younger than that. I made my first film when I was 12. Um, and I still uh, do student films or short films if I feel like it's a great character or a great story. Uh, I'm, it's all about story at the end of the day and character. Well, it, it really this really goes by really fast, as you can see. It does. And we're going to come back and I'm not sure if if your business partner is joining you now or if... I think it's just him. It's just him. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And, and, and let me say that um, Brother Side, there are three. There is the young man sitting here, Robert Xavier Golfin, um, and then there's Zach, um, who's coming up. And then there is... Samuel Joshua Saul. He's your music person. He is. Well, he won't be in this show, but we're looking for him to come up and do another show because I mean, he's actually in Greensboro and he is working on his degree. Yes. So and, education and, is really important. To and you he's guys. also been a correspondent for talking with Janet. Absolutely, as well. he yeah. has been. So you stay tuned. We'll be right back. Brotherside Entertainment LLC, multiple award-winning, 
multifaceted, specializing in film, television, stage, new media, special events, sports, industrials, training videos, commercials, PSAs, and more. We produce unique, fresh, standout material that entertains, enlightens, inspires, and empowers. We expose people from all walks of life to untold stories, taboo topics, and colorful characters through the arts. We produce original content, and we are also ready to help you bring your project to life. Our prices are competitive. Creative and technical challenges can make or break a project. Our team is comprised of lauded filmmakers, actors, and musicians with a combined 20 years of field and academic training. Our work has garnered official selections and commendations at local and international film festivals. We aim to break down the walls that stand between you and your dreams. Visit us now at BrothersideENT.com, on Twitter at BrothersideENT, and on Facebook at Brotherside Entertainment. Absolutely. No matter what group you talk about, um, there are different descriptions for different people. So in Brotherside, we have Robert X, X, um, Golfin, and he's the serious, very intense one. There is Josh, who would, could make a, a tree laugh, right? And then there is S. Zachary Knox, the one with the hair. Is that right? You're the one with the hair. Yeah, yeah, I'm the one with the long hair. <laughs> and, and no one ever knows how you're gonna show up with your hair. Yeah, I, I think it's f because for me, it kind of depends and it changes on my mood and sometimes the seasons are just different. Just however I'm feeling, it can be like this, it can be a more uh, I guess poofy or like 70s um, big fro um, twists, braids, whole lot of stuff like that. They never know. I remember um, um, John Jemison said that one day he saw you. He was, never know. John yeah. Jemison was uh, his famed editor. Yeah. And he said that. And so the, you are also the cinematographer of the group. Again, all of you do like several things. I know mm -hmm. um, Robert Axe directs writes. Um, Josh writes music and he acts. You cinematography and what else? Um, I do cinematography, I write, I direct. Um, I will be doing some acting. I've, uh, done he some will act be doing yeah. some acting. Yeah. You I, will? Yeah, I've done acting in the past. All um, right. I know you have, so. but I, I thought that perhaps you had decided to permanently stay behind the camera. No, but I, I, I think like Rob, my, my first love are the um, the behind the scenes aspect of it, the, the writing, the directing, the uh, cinematography. And, and what is it about cinematography that you like so much? It's, you get to um, basically decide the perspective that people will see the story from. Like when you're reading the script, you've got to think through the story, you've got to think um, what angles, what shots make the most compelling, uh, you know, t tells the story most compellingly and looks the most visually beautiful or sometimes visually ugly depending on what you're trying to to, dis to display to go for and mm -hmm. it's interesting to me because you started out out just you started out writing and acting am i correct yes acting writing writing acting mm -hmm. right and how young were you you were you were when, when what i first when started. you first started acting um well i got my first commercial job at a year old Okay. So I've just been continually been a part of um, theater and film since then. Well, what about writing? What is it that you write? Uh, I heard uh, it's some pretty dark stuff. I've read some of it. So uh, it's some pretty scary kinds of thoughts, places where you go in your writing. It, sometimes, yeah. It, it's, it's odd, and it's like however I become inspired. Like as an idea comes, I kind of jot it down. Um, I've been inspired by a lot of uh, Eastern writers and um, the, 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 um, the, the, the era is, is a, called realist writings and sometimes what they were trying to depict was the harshness of some situations and um, 
like for them the, just the reality of conversation and talking so um that's kind of what i go for sometimes this is what is the harshness of this uh this situation that you're in now in this society at this time what is the harshness of this reality well i um some of the, some of the harshness you know um racial issues um discrimination against uh, latinos and african americans um discrimination against gays uh, women's rights uh, I mean, we, we like to think of ourselves as, you know, Western and very forward thinking, but, you know, we've got quite a bit that we could live up to and that we could um, progress, be more progressive on. I mean, poor people's rights as well. Absolutely. Now, when you, you're a recent graduate from college. Yes. And it was, you, you were an English major. Yes. And, and so now that you've gone through all of that um, writing for school, mm -hmm. has it changed your writing at all, or has it made it just bigger? I mean, do you know? Did you mm -hmm. did you go in writing one way, and you come out writing another way? No, I don't think it um, it changed my writing. It uh, uh, exposed me to um, a, a few new writers that you know I, I copied a little bit from this one style, a little bit from that one style, and um, it gave me the opportunity to practice and polish it. Um, I, I think so, but I'm not. Uh, a dramatically different writer from when I first started. I, I've, as a matter of fact, I've gone back and I've read some of my stuff when I was coming out of high school or, or like my first year in college, and I, I, I'm still very similar. Who do you collaborate? Absolutely. Very often. Absolutely. Yeah. I um, one one of the first things I usually do once, uh, either once I've written it or sometimes when I've got an idea, I'll shoot it over to Robert or I'll shoot it to Josh, and I'll be like, hey. You know, here's an idea. Um, I remember there was, because Josh started going to school with me the last year, and uh, we were in an apartment together, and there was one time it was like midnight, and there was this really cool idea, and me and him just started like researching um, this story, because uh, it was based off of a, an old legend. And um, we started researching it and brainstorming, and I, like, we just had like a wonderful time just just writing. Just writing. Who's going to do the cinematography while you come out front and act? Like like right now, for instance. Like, <laughs> who could possibly set um, their feet in your big shoes? Well, Robert actually uh, was a cinematographer before, so he, he, he's still got a few skills. I, I, I tease when I mess with <laughs> him about it, but he, he's got some skills. And um, in addition to that, I, I, sometimes I will... Uh, set the settings and we'll like set up the shots and we'll like kind of show everyone okay this is what we need and then I can jump in and then afterwards uh, we can get playback to make sure everything ran smoothly. And okay so so writing, acting, cinematography mm -hmm. and what else? I mean what else? I mean well martial arts right? Yeah martial arts yeah. That's your other love. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think I think one of the most impressive things I heard was when you got your first degree belt, mm -hmm. your instructor at that time, well, he's still your instructor, yes, yes. Um, said to you, um, he said to me that every time you kicked, you would fall. Every time you kicked, you would fall. And now you can literally stand and kick several times. Yeah. And so, so are you a, so would you say that you're just like so determined? Are you just a very determined person or are you a perfectionist? Which one? Um, both. I, I think martial arts uh, taught me something very important, which is to always be a, um, a student of your craft. Um, when, when you look at the grandmasters, the reason why they are so great is because it's something they've been doing their entire lives and it's something they work on every day. And so they keep working towards um, to be a martial arts is, martial artist is to um, start down a journey that has no end. So then, and, so then, with your love with martial arts, mm -hmm. your love of cinematog cinematography, will they marry? Yes, your love yeah. of cinematography. And your yeah, love I, actually, of martial I actually arts. already have. I've already started. It was um, the the begin. I, I think I had had in the back of my head a while, like. I wanted to do a martial arts documentary, but I wasn't quite sure what the details would be. Um, and it was inspired, uh, I, was, I wrote a paper in class about martial arts and the people who train in it. And my professor kind of like, it, he, he thought it was a wonderfully written paper, 
but he thought it was all barbaric and thought of competition as blood sport and just kind of was like, Ugh, like that, that's something that's from a past life and there's no place for it in civilized society. Uh, and basically, I'm trying to show, the, I've already started filming the documentary. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a slow work in progress. Documentaries usually are. Yeah, but it's, it's, that's what it's about. It's about what it's really like to train as a martial artist, what martial, how martial artists lives, uh, uh, live mm -hmm. um, for those who compete, what their lives are like. It's much different from how most people think and how uh, a lot of what you see on TV, how it's projected, like the tough macho guy, that the alpha male, mm -hmm. that is what is, is shown. But there's many more levels to it than that. Now, in addition to that, you've, mm -hmm. you've done stage. Yes. You kind of brought up, you were uh, from a teen in your wee one on stage and, yeah. and, and acting. What do you think about uh, how, what do you think about being on stage? Do you like that as much? It's different, I know, than other forms. It is. It is different, and I, I, I have. I do have a love for the stage. Um, I love it, but I think my biggest love right now is film. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Tell me about some of the roles that you've played on stage. Um, when I was in high school, uh, I played Otto Frank. Um, I played. You played a Jewish man. Yes. yes. You played her. The. Anne Frank's father. Yes, Anne Frank's father. Okay. Yes, Otto right. Frank. Um, I played. Uh, I, think, I think his name is Zeke from High School Musical. Um, he oh was yeah, the, the kid yeah, who, yeah. High who School. Hair. Well, debate. you had the hair for it. Yeah. Well, well actually, the, um, the 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 guy who had the hair was uh, it was Corbin Blue's character. I can't think of his name right okay, now. Okay. All right. But yeah. So that was a different character. Yeah, they just adapted it a little bit for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And. Um, uh, since then, I've done uh, a little bit of theater in, in college. I took a, a theater course. You've done voiceover? Yeah, I've done voiceover work. Um, what did you have to do to become Otto Frank? I, I, I had to identify with the situation he was in, which, I mean, as an African American, isn't that difficult? Um, the, 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 the struggles of the, the Jews in the concentration camps, the Jews during Nazi Germany. Um, mirrors what African Americans have gone through. As a matter of fact, um, one thing that's not like to discuss, especially in the United States, is that um, much of what the Nazis did, they learned from the way the United States treated African Americans. Um, so I, 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 that was one of the times when I kind of discovered how many similarities there were. I went to the um, the uh, the Holocaust Museum in Philadelphia and got the opportunity to actually see some of the pictures there and it's just it's something with every character you have to find some connection to it. you have to find some like something that makes the two of you together and um it was just uh it, because of that his sorrow and his loss i was able to connect with now i remember um, at the end of the play, all of your castmates were crying when they came on stage because the last monologue was Otto Frank. Yeah. And they were all in tears when they came on stage. You, you know, you, you burst into tears at the end of each one, and yeah. and it was, um, it was quite something um, to be so young. When we come back, two of the three partners, Robert X. Golfin and S. Zachary Knox together talking about Brother Side. Stay tuned. Growing up can be a challenge. Tiffany and Jasmine are here. Did you not see the dirty looks that they were giving you? Yeah, but they're still our friends, right? I need to tell you something. Your little girlfriend, her father's in prison. What? You get a date to the dance? Yeah, man, obviously. Who do you think I am? I wrote your sister a note, and I asked her, does she like me? And what box did she check? Your friends, you know that, right? Yeah, friends. Come on, Mickey, where are you? I'm coming. I'm coming. Hey, baby. No. What, what's wrong? I'm starting to think you don't understand what it means for me to be your man. Look, I just got you a gift. 
You don't listen. I already got this one. I told you to get something brand new. I'm sorry, Tom. Please, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get in the car. We're back with our behind the scenes show, talking with Janet, with my executive producers, Robert X. Golfin and X. Zachary Knox. We're gonna talk a little bit about Brother Side and some of the work that they've been doing. And all of you guys are college grads and really interested in being focused on your education, am I correct? And he's laughing, is that true? Yes, yes we are. Yeah, okay, and both of you are, are what? You graduated what? I was magna cum laude Oh my God! St. Augustine's University in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. And you were? I, I, I barely graduated. Eat, just eat to pass my graduation. They, they somehow let me out though uh, from a and Is that true? No, that's not true. He's uh, summa cum laude. He's being <laughs> modest. You know what? <laughs> it's really funny because I'm watching the two of you and uh, normally you guys seem so serious on set. You know, you're... Not too long ago, I think it was with Dr. Tiffany uh, Tyson and, and her group, and you guys mm -hmm. were so extremely serious on set. Mm -hmm. Is it so? What is it? Do you like let it out when you're not on set? Is that the, the wild and crazy part? You, you want to go first? No, go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I think it's just that when we're on set, we're very passionate about what we're doing, and we just want to make sure that all the de all, all the angles are covered. Um, Especially in this a situation like the first day of her set where we were shooting outside in 100 degree weather. Yes. And, you know, we don't want our actors to um, suffer any more than possible than they have to. Yeah. So um, it's just about getting there, getting all the shots done, getting in, getting out. The, that time the weather was extremely hot. Um, so you're out in all kinds of weather? Yeah, well, yeah. see, I, you know, I try to pick the best kind of weather to work mm -hmm. in. See, what happened was every shoot we've done other than this one has been in the middle of winter. As, <laughs> as a matter of fact, our first shoot, what, what, what happened after? Our, we, we got stuck in a blizzard, right? Yeah. 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 We were at, at our makeup artist's house. Our uh, company's she, debut project. Yeah. Hey, she she was wonderful. She let us stay there, but yeah, it was a blizzard. So every time I've I've told Rob, oh, Delia, yeah, Delia, yeah. Um, but every time we've been shooting, I was like, Rob, you gotta give me something where we're not we're not in the winter. You gotta give me something where it's not freezing temperatures. And yeah. so he yeah. told me he listened this time. <laughs> and I'll just say Delia's whole name because she's a premier makeup artist, Delia DeCox. She's amazing. Yeah, wonderful. Yes, wonderful. that's her real name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now, when you guys are, you, you guys started uh, six years ago, mm -hmm. you were just wee ones, um, and has your journey gotten any easier in the six years? Nope. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not at all. I, I don't think there is an easy street for independent filmmakers. You know? Why is that? No money? Is that, the, mm -hmm. is that really it? The, the money money is a big, a big issue mm -hmm. when, when you're an independent filmmaker. Uh, I just, but I think that also independent filmmakers strive for things that, you know, the mainstream does not necessarily. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all about the box office and we also are about story and character. Okay, and I so, think that's important. Um, what are the kinds of things that you're striving for at this point? I know breaking down the walls and all of that, but what are you looking to do? I, I, actually, I think that's the, the main thing we're doing besides, you know, breaking down the walls and creating opportunities. I think it's the biggest thing is telling interesting stories um, and telling either either story, an, another side to a story you've already seen mm -hmm. or a story you haven't heard about. You're right, and your company is housed right now in Wilson, North Carolina. Um, is Does Wilson know you're here? Well, we've been here for six years. We've, uh, you know, our very first project, we had a big showy opening at uh, 
uh, the Arts Council. That was our introduction to the Wilson community, but I, I think there's a lot of people that for some reason still don't know. Part of our mission is it has been to create opportunities for people that are here as well because this is home base. So that's what we've always tried to do and we've you know reached out to the different arts organizations and, and individuals in the area. Now whether they answer the door when we knock on it with opportunity, th that's another question altogether. Okay. Yeah. But you know we've, we've, we reach out every time, every time we're doing casting. We want to work with talent that's right here you know, at the home base for Brother Side. And what do you get when you do your casting calls? Where do you usually get answers from? Um, I mean, in North Carolina, usually Raleigh or Charlotte. But honestly, we have a lot of responses from people in Atlanta who are willing to drive up to work on a project. We get responses um, depending on where we've sent it out. We've had people send us stuff from the West Coast and it's like, hey, um, if you've got a small stipend for a flight, we'll come out and do it. Or uh, if you're ever shooting something in my area, please keep our name on your record so that we can work together in the future. So is that because there are so few roles or interesting roles, or is that so many people trying to break into acting? Why do you think people would drive all the way from Atlanta? I think it's I think it's all of that. I think it's hunger. Oh, yeah, it's it's a hunger. It's a wanting to break out, wanting roles uh, for some people who get work but are typecast. I mean, that's how we've had the opportunity to work with some of the people that we work with. They, they're, they're phenomenal actors who, um, you know, you can pull up shows like The Wire and they, you know, have recurring roles, uh, but they're typecasted. So uh, we give them the opportunity to do something they normally wouldn't do. You guys have given a number of actors an opportunity and they've ended up getting bigger and bigger roles. Yes. Is that what you meant by breaking down the walls for, for other people too? Is that yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's that's our goal. We we, we want um, for ourselves and for the people we work with. We want to go off and to do name names. What have you done? Who who have you, who have you given breaks to? Well, we 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 gave a break to uh, you know a, a relatively first time actor. He worked in a different project of mine and. Um, he starred in one of our projects and ended up winning a Best Actor Award at mm -hmm. the Atlantic City Cinefest. Um, more recently, uh, Maddie Jackson, who co-starred with me in Under the Thumb, which Zach co-directed, mm -hmm. uh, guest uh, starred on the hit Fox series Empire. Darcy Filona, uh -huh. who has been in a lot of things, uh, Gossip Girl, Real Husbands of Hollywood. Uh -huh. He went from uh, living in Pennsylvania to actually moving out to LA because she's got so much work. So let's talk about talking about that. How did that happen? It's Brother Side's debut series. It's a um, an, an opportunity to give people an unbiased, try, as much as possible, give both sides of the opinion as often as they will come and speak. And I would like to say, and probably the, the opinion that you probably don't hear. Yeah, yes. On, on talking with Janet. Yeah. And quite I, I frankly, so. you know, it, you're a very accomplished journalist. You've won Buku Awards. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, I mean, the Emmy is... Yeah. The there's, little, there's literally an Emmy but, sitting right there. Yeah. yeah. But you've won, you know, what was it, North Carolina Press Association Awards. I mean, uh -huh. the whole nine. And I think that... First place, second place, third place. The, mm -hmm. the articles that you've given to the Wilson community, um, you know, at, when you wrote for print, I just think are amazing because you told the stories that no one else would tell. Mm -hmm. And I think we're sort I thank of, you. yeah, definitely. And I think we're sort of uh, an extension of that with this show, allowing people to come on and, and talk about the things that are happening to them, because this is what people in the North, the Eastern North Carolina community need. Well, I think the other thing that um, people probably don't know is all the work that goes into doing, putting a show together like this. And perhaps one of these days we'll bring on another camera and let it follow us around because it really is a lot of work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even though you shoot a show in a half an hour, it there's pre-production, there's post-production. Yeah. And post -production, production can Ooh. take a week, am I right? Or or more. Yeah, or, or more. more. Or yeah. much, much longer, depending on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, and can we talk a little bit about Under the Thumb. It was shot here in Wilson. Yes. And, and, what, and, and so why did you shoot it in Wilson? Well, what made you shoot it? Well, Wilson is our home, so I, I think it's it, it, we want to shoot projects here. So, yeah, it was shot here in Wilson. It was uh, two locations inside the city of Wilson and one in Wilson County. Hmm. And, and even though we've shot projects in Philadelphia and Los Angeles, um, North Carolina is a beautiful place 
to shoot film, and it was once, I think, what, number three or number two mm -hmm. in film at one point. Um, the tax incentives have, have made Dried things. Dried out. Yeah. yeah. But it's still uh, a great place to make movie magic. And so mm -hmm. you guys are still trying to, to work on that here, and at one point you were even calling it Wilson Wood? Yeah. 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 From day one of this company, we, yeah. we thought of this place as Wilson Wood. Absolutely. And so, so you're talking about doing some other things right here, am I correct? Yeah. We, 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 I mean, ideally, there, we have several projects um, actually with Wilson and Wilson County in mind, like to shoot it here. And we'd love to, to do that. And so that's the, those are the things that Wilson is so blessed to have you for, you know, if I may say so myself. Oh, well, thank you. Know thank what you. I mean? That it, that it's um, a really good thing because not everybody, you know, has somebody in that and their town trying to create. A lot of times, people would leave their hometown to go to Hollywood or some place that they think is a little more fertile, and, and you didn't do that. No, and and as you've said on your show with several guests, there there is so much talent locally. I mean, it's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. The issue, much like it is almost everywhere, is that we have to come together in order to make things happen. There has to be a unity amongst the artists. And yeah. if there isn't, nothing will get done. And you have to do the work. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, particularly Absolutely. if you're an actor, you have to do the audition. You have to put yourself on tape and submit it. If you're not willing to do that, I mean, you're not entitled to anything in this business. And that's one of the things that Zach and I know more than anyone else, I think, um, if, if I dare say. So when you're not entitled to it, you have to work even harder, and I think that's a commendable trait for somebody. So I, 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 no, I was just going to say, I, th I think we've had many people to come on set with us and kind of have learned the, the grueling process of making a film. I mean, everyone, uh, they, you know, they see Hollywood, they see the stars, they see everyone glitz looking and glamour. glitz and glamour, and don't realize like, it's, it's a grind to, to make it happen. Well, so you got a chance to meet S. Zachary Knox, Robert X. Golfin. They are two of the executive producers of the show. Rambo Smith is another executive producer of the show. Um, and, and eventually we'll get a chance to interview all of them together, I hope and pray, really soon. This was the behind the scenes. We hope that you enjoyed it. And we hope that you will continue to look at Talking with Janet. Thank you. Take your glasses off. Take your glasses off. What's wrong with my glasses, man? I don't like them. Yo, look, look, if I take my glasses off, you still talking? You're talking. Yes, I'm talking. What? I'll start talking when I feel like it. Hey, yo, man, if you if you want to handle this, go ahead and handle this. Say something. Bruh, bruh. Son. 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 You don't even want this. You don't even want it, bruh. You don't want it, son. What? You don't want it. Keep talking. Knock all the hair off your face. I'll knock your hairline back to the back of your neck, son. Whatever. Give you a hairy back. All this be down here. I think we're done now. I'm, I'm done when I say I'm done. You're done. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on Talking with Janet, please contact us by email, brothersideent at gmail.com. Leave your name and contact information. Without that, your guest will not be considered. This has been a Brotherside Entertainment production.